Hi there, it's Mishka again and it's lovely to be with you in Let's Talk Business. And as I mentioned and I promised this week we're going to talk about relationship, relationship with our clients and understanding clients. Um, we spent a couple of weeks on this topic of understanding people. People are vital, they are vital parts of a business owner and a business because that is why we do things. <laughs> Nobody else is going to come and buy from us. The people that are going to come and buy from us, the people that are going to use our services and our products, they're people. <laughs> But there's nobody else. It may even be that we need to sell it for another function, but it's still going to be a human being. It's going to be a person that's going to have to come and buy it. So it's so important. How do we do that? How do we give a relationship a chance? You know, what do I do? What do I have to see as a business owner? How do I qualify good customer service? What is the... What, what would make me successful? What makes me different from somebody else? It's sometimes so hard for me to see how bad customer service is out <laughs> in the marketplace. And I don't, like I say, I'm possibly one of the most positive people. But, um, and possibly it's something that sort of irks me when people don't give good customer service. I believe you've got to give the best to your clients. I do believe that when we offer anything to anybody, we've got to understand their needs, we've got to understand who they are, we've got to see who we're dealing with on the other side of the table. Because remember, you may even be selling to a person that is, that, that is just working within an organization. So how do I understand what's happening here? You know, that person is it the decision maker I'm working with. Does it matter? Whoever we deal with, do we honor them? Do we respect them? I've possibly had m some of my most impactful, um, I want to call it victories in business, because I've had difficult clients and I didn't give up. And those difficult clients were the ones that actually formed us. I still say, <laughs> Let me find out what they want, because those people forms our service. They are the ones that we can actually learn from. But if we don't understand it, we are going to get offended, which is not good. So relationship building for our clients is of utmost importance, that we're sensitive to what they need. Service is one of the best things that we can do. You know... Um, <laughs> I almost want to say to you that pride is one of the things that can completely bomb our businesses out from being successful. Why am I saying that, pride? That sounds like a terrible thing to say. But when we deal with people and we, we cannot be in a situation where we come across that we think we know always better than they do. Yes, you've got to be confident in your product. But when you respect what your client needs, when you respect what it is that we're looking for, when you listen to what they want, when you continually go back to communicate with them and say to them, I know you've asked me for this, but now we're looking for something else. You know, it depends on, on I can't do this for you. I have to do this. How do you feel about this? What else can I do for you? How much do we respect our clients? It's very, very important to find out that in a client relationship, you're still dealing with a person on the other side of the table. Whether it is one person, because you, you are negotiating on behalf of an organization, and you're going to sell a service or a product into a corporate company, so you're dealing maybe with a team of buyers, or you're dealing with the people on that side, that person represents the company they want to give their best. So it's key to understand that when I give them a service, I can actually help that person to shine in their role. If I do what I do well, that person can actually go back to, remember they're reporting perhaps to somebody, and they can go back and look good because you help them to look good. And that is a relationship that we build. How do we get it? People say, no, I don't want to deal with you. You know, rejection comes in. How do we handle it? Go on to the next one. We need to keep on doing what we're doing. And then what we're doing, we need to keep on doing it well. Best business is the ones that we already have, and we treat them well. We understand that relationship is of utmost importance. When we have clients, remember I, I talked about temperaments two weeks ago, understanding myself.
Now, if I understand temperament, I will also think about it when I start to do sales, when I start to deal with my client. What temperament am I dealing with? What is sitting again across the table? When we talk about negotiations, who am I dealing with? Who's the person on the other side? When we've got an understanding of that and we're sensitive to that, you will actually do far better in relationship building because you'll understand that some people, you know, you just don't do certain things with them because it's just not going to work. And with others, you know, again, this is what you do. And I'm not talking here about any form of manipulation because that is just not good in anything. Sincerity in business is so needed. We need to have people out there in business today that are very high in integrity. We need to have a business um, <laughs> era. <laughs> I would like to see business people starting to come out that are really, really, really excited about bringing integrity back into the marketplace. Business people who are sincere. I just don't want to take your money away from you. I don't want to just make a little buck and get off and go. No, I want to be there. I want to be in this relationship. I want to hang around. I want to make your life better. I want to be there for you. I want to make sure things are going to go well. Integrity. But still, we need to understand the person sitting opposite us, the person that we're dealing with. We need to understand our customer. We need to know if we're, if we're going to trade and if we're going to do certain things. Uh, even if we're doing something wider, like we, we have a coffee shop, who's going to come walk into my business? What do they want to see? How are my relationship going to look? What are my waiters going to be like? What, what personal attention people are going to get? What is my audience? A coffee shop might be people that really just want to come and sit in a comfortable spot, you know, so they like it when, when there's warmth and somebody's talking to them. You might get restaurants where people just don't, don't bug me, I'm here, that's it, that's my table, I'm paying for it, I don't want other people to be around me all the time. Can you see? So you've got to know your customer, you've got to know your client, you've got to know what the need is, where do I, don't overstep the boundary, understand when do I do what. It makes us far more successful. When a client asks for something, how difficult is it to give them just the best and to give them even something more? How difficult is it? And when we choose now in our organization, because who is going to be the person that's going to build relationship? What relationship will bring this to the next level? Who is the person that I trust with this because my clients are the ones that will bring business more business a client will give you repetitive business why would they come back if i do have that coffee shop why will somebody be there again tomorrow because i bring in something that they like i know my environment i understand perhaps there's a lot of businesses in the environment and i offer them a certain thing with coffee and, and newspapers or whatever bring in something extra with internet so you you cater for your client's needs. Remember demand, that's part of relationship. When a client demands are taken care of, what do they need? You're building relationship. So it's not always the, the smile, it is definitely important. It is very important how we come across. It's very important that the person that we send out there to represent our organizations take pride in our company. We need to make sure we do not send representatives out in the field, represent our company, who do not take pride in it. It's worth your while to get that employee, that person that will do client liaison, so excited about what we're doing, so excited about it, and that person must be building a relationship, long-term relationship, sincere relationships. That person must be the person that will follow up that relationship, you know, you, you have a certain relationship with these people. You've got to understand who are the ones that I need to spend time with. What do I hear when I sit with them? Are they people that want me to spend time with them? What more can I give them? So these are all things that, that you've got to understand your client. We've got to understand our customer. What other examples are there? I mean, if you're making, now listen to this, you're making a product you want to sell out there. You might not be the one that's going to sell it. 
Mm -hmm. Now we're thinking about what is my product is now going to be in the hands of another person. How do I build a relationship that's almost going to be an indirect relationship? Because I'm taking a product, I'm making it, but I don't have contact with the client. You see, if your client is not sold on the product, they're going to go to someone else. <laughs> That's a far more difficult way of building a relationship. How am I going to secure that? Because relationship brings business. It's not always the product. It's not always the service that we offer. It is the, it's the relationship that we have. Because a person, if they see that I give them whatever they need, the service I give is good, they are, that they are important, everybody wants to be important, they're going to come back and they want more. They're going to give me their best because they will just give me business. Really, that's one less problem for them. So what do I do if I have a product that I'm selling but I'm not selling it? So I'm, I'm, what I'm talking about is I'm manufacturing but it's coming from my hands into somebody else's hands and I've got to make sure that they are going to present my product where they are. Let's talk about um, somebody that makes, bakes cakes. Let's just make an easy one there. They, bakes, they would bake a cake. Now a lady that would do that and have her own coffee shop, she's got relationships with everybody and she knows everybody is going to have that. But how does she know if she's only in her kitchen or you have a product. You may be bringing out a beautiful product into the market. And you know it's the best product. It's very good. It's lovely. It's, it's, it's good to eat. How are you going to get your product sold when you have to now first send it to a shop or to a restaurant for them to, 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 to sell? Because you've got no control where you're making your product over your end client at that moment. What do you do? Because how do you build relationship? How will the client now know who we are? You think about this. Because clients want to know that. They see something more. Who is, who are going to sell your stuff? Do they take a pride in what you're giving or is it just another thing that they're going to let go? Now I'm talking about small scale. I'm not talking about big, 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 big scale. If something has already got a settled name in the market, it sells itself. But I can tell you, one thing, nothing starts big. Everything in life starts small. And very often it's the people who understood relationship that's got brand names today. Because you can see it even in the advertising. There's a consistency in the advertising. And the advertising always speaks to relationship really. What is my demand? What does my client really want? So at the end of the day, what the client sees is actually... The relationship. So there is a very, very, very masterful way that we can do marketing in, a, in such a way that when we get our product to the end user, that they will still come back, not just because it tastes good or because it's very effective. We've got perhaps pieces and we're putting it together. Why would the one do better than the other? Why is it that some of these things just have it? Because to a certain degree, it's not just the quality of our product that sells it. It isn't. Relationship is of utmost importance. If you do have a product that you're selling in another store, let's go back to the example I used. Maybe it's a product like a cake or, a, or products that we can eat. Now you've got to sell it somewhere else. Make sure you do promotional, in-store promotion. Get, get your brand name out there. Make sure that there is something personal about it, something that will touch the heart because who's your audience? Who will buy the cakes? <laughs> You're talking about perhaps mothers. You're talking about people that's got families. Now, they buy because they want to feel important and special and because these things are nice to eat and the children want them and they look good. So you'll package them differently. You'll package them friendly. You'll package them like relationship package. You know what I'm saying? So yes, you've got to be masterful. You've got to be skillful in what you're doing. Yes, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking a bit of a high level if I, if I go into that depth of it. But if we just speak about relationship one-on-one -on -one with clients, never let your client wonder what's going on, where they are. If you haven't done what they've asked you to do, just get back to them. 
very often people are scared because they can't get it done and they don't have what it takes and they just never go back. Uh, you know, you, you, you quotes. Get the quotes done. Whoever is dealing with the quotes in your company, let there be relationship. Let there be a relationship of I can trust you. I want to tell you something. When people look for a product, they should actually remember you. Your own company name must come up first. Or even the person that represents your company, that name and that face should be in with, you'd be with them because when we sell something and somebody says to us no today they don't need it if you remember what I said about the modern impulse if I go and I do a sale I try to promote what I'm doing and somebody says no today it's just because they don't have a demand for it very often that happens but are they going to remember you how are you going to get it right that in six months' time, when that demand comes up, that they will call you and not somebody else. You see, that's the way we need to think. Because then we start to become far more strategic in business. We don't want to walk into businesses and think, okay, well, I understand eight of them aren't going to say yes, two of them are going to say yeah, uh, you know, and then, oh, it's okay, I'll just leave the eight. Mm -mm. Relationship will make sure that the other eight, when the demand is there, I'm there. So that means contact. That means here and there, let them know you, you're there. You know, relationship. Understand your customer. Understand who you're dealing with. Build those relationships. Make it important in your organization. Let your company know that you've got a culture of bringing relationship into it. People, with, there's a lack of good relationships. Um, and I want to say to you today, I want to encourage you as a business owner, make it a priority to give good customer service, to build good, solid relationships with the people in the market. Let them know you. <laughs> give them no alternative but to come back to you because it's pleasant to deal with your organization. You're professional. You do what you say. You deliver on time. You, you know, we don't do these things like promise and then we don't do it. There's no integrity in it, first of all. If you can't do it, be honest. You know, you can always help somebody else in business. What, you know, they're going to come back to you. If you just give somebody else the opportunity, let them do it. Your client won't forget that. But run with it. Be there for them. Make sure you invest the time. And I'll tell you something, your business will grow automatically. It will just come on referral. A lot of people will just want to do business with you. That is just a fresh breeze into the whole system of good business people that's coming up. From me, Mishka, until next week, goodbye.